be? Do you think we're all going to die? It, it's just... It seems like the Grim are growing more stronger every day. I'm honestly not sure if we'll be able to stop them. OH SHIT! IT'S THEM! Okay, so the spy's name is Ilya, who apparently had some history with Blake, while her and Sun tried to get the scroll. They managed to do it, but Sun gets injured. Ruby and the gay sees multiple paths, and Red doesn't want to go to the left. Nora says that she and Ren will go to the right while Ruby and John take Crow to the left. Oscar leaves the house, and we don't see why when the last time he tries to ignore Ospin, but whatever. Oh look, the big guy is named Hazel, who's just passing by. Ruby and John make it to the empty village, and we get a flashback to Ren's childhood via the flower, where he meets Nora, who is being bullied. Sometimes the worst action to take is taking no action at all. Well, the only action I'm taking for the moment is reviewing the entire volume, which is unfortunate. Red's parents die during the attack, and cries until his semblance is activated, where he suddenly becomes brave and goes to Nora. She hugs Red, and the semblance also transferred to Nora. Okay, I don't get the semblance. Josh, can you hear me out? Yes, I can. Red's semblance is kind of a mystery, actually. And some people say it just masks them from the grim. Personally, I think it just dulls their emotions, like calms them down, so the grim can't detect them. So pretty much, he's the ultimate grim uh, repellent. That's the word I would look for. Uh, let me check out my ruby notes. I'm going out to guess. Yeah. Uh. Well, the two introduced themselves as kids. They head to the cave with some black blood and weapons all over the place. What a charming value! Beautiful! I'm so happy to come this far to see boring dramatic stuff that I don't give a crap about, with Yang scenes being the only things that I could give a shit. When I think of Ruby, I think of funny moments, memorable characters with the traits, awesome music, and action scenes. Instead, we got a volume that's just drama, once in a while not really exciting action scenes, and a bunch of walking through the forest without telling how much time has passed via caption. Josh, why do you love the show again? We cut back to Salem's base where Cinder seems to be holding back and Tyrion reports on what happened. Disappointing Salem. And he goes all ape shit where he cries and laughs while killing some Griff. Too bad he doesn't leave an impact. Back at Patch, we see Yang stripping the robot arm, getting a new member Celica, and taking the tarp off the bike. So yeah, she's back in action. I guess you could say she's armed and ready. Then Ty approached her asking, you gonna find Raven, or are you gonna find Ruby? Weiss tries to escape at night with the help of a butler, Klein, to go to Mistral. And oh look, another drama scene, because this volume doesn't have enough! I am done seeing my friends hurt because of me. And I hope they hate me for leaving. You don't mean that. Yes, I do! Can this volume show some sense of humor that it was good at the first two volumes? I can't believe I'm saying this, but I miss John in a dress! <gasps> oh, oh dear. Thank you! Adam Taurus is planning to overthrow the leader of the White Fang and stage a full-scale attack on Haven Academy. It will be the fall of Beacon all over again. Oh yeah, because that was so much fun the first time! <laughs> uh, whatever, we're almost done. Back in the forest, they go up against this big bad Grim. There's another dramatic moment. Rescue comes after killing said Grim. They finally make it to Mistral at last, and Nora and Ren holds hands. This ending right here is the only dramatic moment where I cared, and admittedly, I kinda tear up at this ending when I first watched it. The music and voice narration from Ruby is outstanding and emotional. While narrating, Weiss and Yang both head towards Mistral. Blake is planning on taking back the White Fang. 
one of the bad guys is having tea with the professor of Haven Academy. And in the post credit scene, Oscar meets up with Crow at a bar, and after asking for the cane back by Ozpin, Crow knows Ozpin is a part of Oscar and gives back the cane. It's good to see you again, Oz. So it's done! Volume 4 is done! The most boring out of all! The best thing I can say about this volume is that the animation is much prettier than the other volumes, but there's way too much dramatic moments. Its tone is dark and grim all throughout with little to no comedy. I like the first two volumes because the tone is in between and it has a certain charm to it that makes it an enjoyable experience. I mean, I get that this is after the fall of Beacon and our characters are going through some sort of pain, but the beginning and the end has one or two actual funny moments. That's it! What's this trying to be? The Last of Us? That game is one of the greatest ever and this is one of the most boring ever! The action is dull and the music like Volume 3 is just not as good. It's nice that the setting is not in the city for most of the time, but what's the point when the volume is a boring experience? Well, I agree with Christian that this volume can be boring and even uninteresting in some points. It does have its very high point. Very, it has its high points. For one, the very few gang scenes. But, but hey, it's better to have some than to have none. It's also really good that the writers gave Ren and Nora a very tragic and dramatic backstory. So, yeah. And then they got together together at the end. Speaking of the end, I will also say the music is a mixed bag, to say the least. On one hand, we have Let's Just Live, and um, which is a very mediocre opening. And on the other, we have On Be Ready, which is the best song ever, in my opinion. No, oh, this song even helped me get through depression. Really? Yeah, I mean, I didn't tell you about that. Okay. 2016 and 2017, well mid-2016, early-2017, hell on earth. I was bullied, jerks, I was being backstabbed all the time. Anyway, the biggest jerk in my life was Adam at that point. Well, no, I, I kid you not, his name was Adam at that point. Then I saw Ruby, and my world was changed forever. I'm also going to say that, well, when I saw Yang get over her depression, my depression was easier, easier, easier to be cured. And... Super Gun 2018, I went out of my way to meet the Yang's actress, the great Barbara Dunkelman. Yeah. So, yeah. Volume 4 may have been probably the most boring, but it was the most interesting, to say the least. Well, just one more volume, then I'm done for now. It's far better than this volume, but not by much. I need to watch TV again. Oh, Josh, just one more question before we end the video. Shouldn't guns kill people in Ruby? It's just that I've seen a few people get shot and they get back up just fine. Is it because of the aura or something? To answer your question about the aura stopping bullets, it can. So, you're right. Well, that's it. No, 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 no. We're not done yet. Keyword we. What? We got one thing left. And what would that be? <clears throat> uh, what's those things? Uh, it goes eyes, lungs, pancreas. So many snacks, so little time. Oh, well, see you next time where we give our thoughts to the new Venom movie. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we will see you soon.